Hi guys, this is Star Warden. Welcome back. And today I'm going to be talking about the Wing Feather Saga. It's a book series. It's like fantasy. And I love fantasy. So this is my favorite. I'm absolutely obsessed. What this series is about is it follows three siblings, Janner, Tink, and Lily, as they go through the evil in the world, which is the evil fangs of Dang lizards but they're like people except they like everything completely opposite like they think flowers are disgusting they think maggots are delicious and so they share qualities with humans but deep down their core they're lizards but Janner, Tink, and Lily they're the main three you're gonna see them all throughout the books and they're just they're like my favorite characters. Oh my goodness, I'm so excited to talk about them. Janner, first of all, is... He's pretty much the main character. This is Janner. And so, he's the older sibling. He's 12, for everybody who doesn't know it. And he's like... Something about him is... The only thing he wants to do is just have, like... He, in the books, not the TV series, he just wants to sail like his father. He didn't know much about his father because he died when he was young, but that's the only thing he wants to do. But it, Tink and Lily, his younger brother and si sister, brother and sister, are stopping him from doing that because his mom, Nia, is saying, you can't, no, you gotta look after them because it's your duty as an older brother. He's like, but mom, please. And so he's angry that he has to watch over his little siblings, which I will get to in a little bit. But something else about Janner is he's like a bookworm. He loves, he loves books and writing. And I can connect with that because I, like ever since I read Wingfeather, I got really into reading. And, and writing. My dream job is to become an author. And so I've, I've written a couple stories. I'm not sure if they're good, but yeah, he, 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 he does that. And then his little brother Tank, oh my goodness, I'm going to have like an entire episode on this eventually, but I won't say much, but Tank is Janner's little brother. He's 11 and he is how do I say this? He does not think before he does anything. He's very quick. Like, physically and mentally. He is fast. Like, running fast. And, like, he doesn't ever think twice like Janner does. He just goes for it. Which can be good sometimes, but it can be bad. And more things about Tink is his real name is actually Kalmar. It says that early on in the book, so I'm not really spoil spoiling anything. I don't know how he got the nickname Tink. I assume it's, like, something that has to do with his fear of heights. He has a fear of heights. It, it's, like, halfway through the book where it goes away, though. And something else about him, he's always hungry. Food is always, like, up there on his, like, need list. He's always hungry. And... Something about his character, I guess. He and Janner, they're like, they're brothers. Although in the beginning of the book series, they're kind of, I want to say disconnected, kind of. Like, they live with each other. They're like, Janner's like, don't you do it. Don't you do it. And then Tink's like, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. And so their connection as brothers, they it grows over the books. And I love seeing that. But in like the first book, I'm only talking about this one right now. It's like... Janner is like, please just don't. And then Kamar's like, I said Kamar, I meant Tink. He's like, but why should I listen to you? And so, yeah, that that's Tink for you. And then Lily, Lily, oh my goodness, she's one of my favorites. Janner's my favorite, but Lily, since she was very little, she's had a kind of disabled foot. Her like below the knee and like her foot is kind of twisted at an odd angle I have a poster of her up here you can't really see it but it's like twisted at a weird angle so she has walked with a crutch 
all for life, and she's nine, by the way. So, but the thing is, she doesn't let that disable her if, since Tink is very fast and the janitor always has to keep up with Tink, she's like, no, I got it, I got it, no, you got, you guys keep on going, I'm coming. So she's just really brave and kind and musical. She's a really musical character. She has something called a whistle harp, which is a beautiful instrument. It's like a whistle plus a harp, if you don't believe me. It's a whistle plus a harp. But she's she loves to sing. She's very musical. And then she's just really brave. Like in the, one of the opening, not the opening scene, but in one of the first chapters in the book, they got into their first fight with a fang and Lily kicked it. And now she has earned the name Lizard Kicker from her grandpa. And so she's just an awesome character. I mean, like, the way she's changed over the books, like, she was, like, small in the books, and she's like, oh, no, like, bad things are happening. What are we gonna do? And then by the end of the book, she's like, okay, who, who, who should I punch now? Who should I kick now? But those are, like, the three main characters, the siblings, and then what the story is, like, about is it's in this in the setting of a world called, called Air We Are and how it got its name was when the first fellows came along, Dwayne and Gladys. Like, Dwayne woke up and he was like, well, Air We Are. Like, here we are, Air We Are. And so that's what they grow, grow, grown to call the world. So now it's in, like, Air We Are and everything. And then the book series starts out in the continent of Scree in the town of Glipwood. But, like, I won't be explaining, like, the entire, like, thing of it, but... There's the Green Hollows and Dang, which is all over, all the way over across the Dark Sea of Darkness, which is the book title On the Edge of the Dark Sea of Darkness. And, but yeah, I think it's kind of unfortunate that that continent is called Dang. Like, it, it's pretty strange. But, and then in Dang, there's the Green Hollows, there's the Kill Ridge Mountains, the Blackwood, Anira, the Shining Isle itself. The jungles of plants are over there, I'm pretty sure. I don't know where the woes of Sh Shreve are. They're somewhere over there, I think. But it has just a really quick layout. Over in Scree, though, there's Glipwood, where our entire series starts out. And oh my goodness, I love it. And then we have Torboro. We have Fort Lamendron. We have Dugtown. We have the Ice Prairies. We have the East Bend. We have the bend we have the mighty river blap and we have of course the cliffs of glipwood where once every once every year like the the half moon rises or something and the dragons there are dragons in this story guys they come and sing and so that's where kind of our story kind of leads off it kind of leads off with them heading into dragon day and then of course one last thing there is the Foob Islands. I won't get to it in this episode, but I will likely talk about it either in my episode on North Ruby Eaton, which is book two, or my episode where I literally talk all about how much Tink's character has been through. But I don't know, so that's kind of like the layout for everything, I guess. And then, like, the background of the story is it was like, it's nine years after a great war that completely destroyed the Shining Isle of Anira, And now Fangs kind of rule everything. They were, th they were like free people, like kings in Scree, till the Fangs came along. And then everybody's life changed. And then Janner, Tink, and Lily had to grow up in this. Like, they cannot remember before the war. And Lily was just a baby when it happened, so. And then, let's see. Why this one is my favorite is because, well, I can just, I've read it four times. I finished book four for the fourth time two nights ago, I think. But I just love this series because, like, I can connect with the characters some, like, Janner, there were times in like, book two or book four, that he was like, oh my goodness, I'm so selfish. 
Okay, I did it. But I was like, no, Jana, you're not being selfish. You're just trying to protect your brother. And so, and then there are just a ton of things happening, like the setting and like the way they talk. There's one character, Oscar and Ratip. He's like Jana's mentor. He's like, he's like an old chubby man who's trying to conceal his baldness. And he just says, in the words of, and then says some quote, like in the words of, say, I can't remember any right now, but in the words of this famous author, yada, yada, yada. And so he'd say funny things like that. And then there's also just the fight versus, well, the fight, good versus evil. I mean, the Igaby kids, which is Jarrett and Lily, and I didn't really mention that before, but they, they're fighting, or they're going to be fighting against a nameless evil whose name is Nag. And I know that sounds weird, but once you get to book four, then it'll all wrap up together. But it's just the fight, good, and it's on the side of life and music and heroism and everything. And then there's the nameless evil, and it's like, uh, and it's like, but I want to rule the world. Why didn't I do it? And so it's just crazy. And then they're like, I must take revenge on the world. I have to bring order to it. And I think that the bad guy, I won't be talking about this that much, but the bad guy, villains these days, I've been saying this, but villains these days, they're just, I feel like a lot of them are one-sided. Like I said in my last episode, the high evolutionary, he's just downright evil to his core. And I don't know the reasons for that. But with Nag the Nameless, who's the villain, he has a really good purpose. I won't say for reasons, but he was, like, kind of manipulated by, I guess, the true villain who actually died first. But it's just a crazy, crazy story. And then I think it, when I started actually liking the series, I think I was somewhere in book one. I forgot where. They were in some sort of, in like, the Ankle Jelly Manor scene. It was just, what happened was, it was just Tink and Janner talking, and, like, I forgot what it said, but Tink said something like, unlatch or something, and I'm like, I like that word, and I suddenly got drawn into it more. It was just that one point, and I'm like, I like that, and so, and then as soon as I finished the, the series, I was crying, probably, probably because of the sad ending, but also... It was over. I mean, Andrew Peterson is not writing another book. I don't want to face it. I don't. I can't. But he's just not. And so I was crying by the end. And for those of you who don't know, it ends on a total big cliffhanger. And why? Tell me why. And so it's just something I'm drawn into so much. All my friends are ridiculously upset with me I bet a lot but so yeah that's kind of why I like it that was like a big thing and then same thing that I said last week with my Star Wars episode I just get drawn into worlds and when you're like reading Wingfeather you just open up a page and suddenly you're there reading the chapter flaps in a sack it's like it says, Nia stood by the stove looking at the floor with her hands on her hips. The grizzled old man wiped his mouth with a napkin and gripped the t sides of the table with his big hands. Jader was in trouble. He knew it. Like, just like feeling it. I thought that that was a different page, but just feeling it. And I gotta pause real quick. I gotta text my friend back. But just feeling the, like, emotion that Andrew Peterson puts into these books. I'm like... I can connect with so many of the characters in different ways. Like, I won't say how because I... This is not a spoilers ep episode. I keep on saying episode video. But it's just I get wrapped up into it. And I'm like... I love it. Like, there's one of the 
biggest scenes in book four. I love book four for this. And one of the characters is fighting. I won't say who, but I'm just like, whenever that character fights in that book, I'm like, yes, 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 let's go, let's go. So there are three, maybe four, two, two to four occasions where I'm just like, it's my favorite part of the book. I just love it. But the humor in the series is also amazing. The, all the different kinds of animals also. Like, when I first looked at the book, I saw my very first toothy cow. I saw this page, the first thing I saw. And it has quirky animals. Like, it has the squeeblin. It's like a cute ball of fluff. Except you cannot trust it in the TV series. Lily was like, oh my goodness, it's so cute. She's like, aw. And then Jenna's like, nope, and that is dangerous. And so it literally jumped into a sky, snatched a bird from it, and ate it. But it's like untrustworthy and it's adorable. And then there's the toothy cow, which is my favorite animal. And it's like just a really quirky idea. It's like a cow, but it's dangerous. It's a danger cow. But my question is, there's something called cheesy chowder. Cheese is made out of milk. How do they get milk? I don't know. And I don't see any goes unless Gamblots gave milk. I doubt it though. Somebody tell tell me. I don't I don't I don't understand. And so but right on the track of creatures, there's horned hounds they're like dangerous they're like hounds but they have like a big horn on their head and then there is the wexers they're pretty much like small mushrooms like but they're alive with legs and did i say wexers i said wexers right i'll check that and let's see there are fendrels there's the lone fendril and it announced when autumn is coming like one of the first chapters of book two, it was like, caw, caw, the movie was like, oh my goodness, it's almost autumn. So it's just a beautiful creatures and sea dragons. Oh, hello, lady Lou. It is, in the TV series, they're so beautifully animated, and in the books. I'll get there eventually. these sea dragons they're majestic creatures they in book four they come in a lot and they just come in through all throughout the series and i feel like the dragons also strengthen the siblings relationship in the series in the series in the series gotta stop saying that but then there's also ridge runners they're more like people except they're kind of like want to say kind of more like I don't know they're like they're kind of like people like they can think like people they're just like smaller creatures and they look kind of human except they're like kind of imagine how like kind of a skinny goblin I guess but the one thing they care about more than anything they would betray people for fruit and I mean, like, cool. Honestly, I would get sick of some fruit eventually, I feel like. Except for mango. I love mango. But, yeah, that's, like, the entire creature thing. And so there are four books in the series. On the Edge of the Dark Sea of Darkness, North Be Eaten, Monster in the Hollows, and The Warden and the Wolf King. They're so awesome. And the character development of all these characters it just grows. I mean... Jader's character development is like he was like in the area where he's like I don't want to protect my siblings and then by the end of book four it's like the only thing he cares about now he's like this is my duty I have to do it it's like I have to make I must say I have to make someone proud I don't know who who he would make proud though let's just say his uncle who is who is also really protective of his little brother who was Jader's dad. And so now he he went from like a kid who was I guess kind of scared of this stuff to a 
like I want to say an awesome warrior who's protective of his siblings. But the thing is, on the edge of the dark sea of darkness in the in the Warden and the Wolf King, it's like he still has like it was said in the beginning of the book he had anxiety from like a for the coming war in the Warden and the Wolf King. He's like so much that he forgot his birthday. But and then also in the beginning of the books he's like oh no well where where did everybody go oh no so I feel like he's still kind of stressing things out but he's dealing with it differently and then for Tink oh my goodness for Tink I can't spoil everything yet but like I said he's like a reckless he's a he, he's a reckless kid and he doesn't listen to Janner so I was making Janner's job as an older brother very hard on him and so, let's just say that gets him in trouble, and that trouble leads to more, like, things that just wind up changing his life even more, like, that wound up to him getting bullied a lot in book f uh, three. I won't say for reasons why. And then, by the end of book three, he's just, like, his role. Like, he's, a, he's accepted his role in the story, and he's like, okay, let's go. And then in book four, he's like, if he's like, if I die, I am willing to take the bad, the bad guys along with me. And so he's just like, he still got his little reckless, like spirit nature in it, but he's like, I don't know, compared to how he uses it in book, book one and how he uses it to book four. He used it for better in book four, although he's like, although he didn't like what he was planning in the end of book four, he went for it. He's like, he's still saying, if I die, I'm going to take the bad guys along with me. And then with Lily, I'd say she's become stronger from book one to book four. Like, she's watched her brothers, like, fight against so many evil forces. And she's fought evil forces, too, like the Stone Keepers. I won't t say too much about them, but they are, they're just evil. And so by the end of the book, she's just like, I need sleep. But she's so ready to, like, go, like... She fights with music. Fangs don't like music. And so she, she, like, messes with their heads when she, like, plays her music. And it makes it easier for everybody else to fight. So Lily's doing the real fighting, I guess. And she doesn't like being left behind by her brothers when they go off on some awesome adventure. She's like, why'd you leave me, guys? Why'd you let me out of this? Stop acting like I'm disabled. But... I just said a lot about Lily that I guess I didn't plan on. But anyway, this book series is for families. It's good for it's good for like kids, not like too young. It does get a little bit dark, but and then for adults, if you like if you're like not big of a reader, then I'd say start with Wingfeather. But Anyway, it's a Christian series. It's by a Christian singer-songwriter and author. And it kind of corresponds with the Bible, I guess. I don't really know. But it's like, I would definitely suggest it to like read aloud as a family. My entire family's read it. And only so far, one doesn't like it. I have two little sisters and one older one. So I had to read all four big books to my younger siblings one she liked it one she's like stop 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 but i would definitely suggest it for families teens like teenagers like in the 12 to i don't know 16 18 range i i have friends who've like read harry potter and i can't read harry potter so i don't know what's happening they're like it's, it's not good and i'm like seriously but it's like in that it's like in that range it's like actually like for middle schoolers but anyone can read it I would definitely suggest it it it's a heartfelt story it's 
action-packed. It's full of music. There are poems. There are illustrations. There are songs. Which, worst form of song, the three thags. Th thags stands for three honored and great subjects, by the way. Word, form, and song. But it's just full of awesome words and characters and art and music and action. And I feel like... It's good for kids, adults, and teens. But I'm not an adult, so I don't know. And But for kids, I'd say I have a five-year-old cousin, and I was like, she's like, ooh, what's this? And I'm like, I was reading book three at the time for the fourth time. I'm like, oh, that's the monster in the hallways. Then she's like, the monster's hallway. Yeah, and my mom's like, yeah. My mom said, yeah, I don't think that's old enough for you. I'm like, yeah, I know, I know. So... I'd say maybe seven, maybe eight and up. Went like on it on to like a hundred and two or something like that. But anyone can read this as long as they like aren't involved in it. So that this is kind of like wrapping up my video for my upcoming videos. I am going to be posting some art. I'm really excited to do that. I am working on. I'm currently working on Janner, Tink, and Lily when they're grown up. They're going to be kind of in their outfits in at the end of The Warden and The Wolf King because I had no idea what I was doing. But I'm going to be excited to post those. I'm going to be posting, like, my, like, kind of art style. Like, not art style, but, like, I drew Lily. I'm currently drawing Janner. I'm going to be doing that. And then I'm going to be posting some Green Ember art. Wing Feather Saga memes part three. I'm working on that. It's gonna, I assume it's gonna be a little while, maybe next week, two weeks. But I'm gonna try to make it better. And then next week, I'm gonna be talking all about the green ember. So I'm really excited about that. And I'm also thinking about posting music, like singing and stuff. I have. It's been a while since I've taken them, but I've taken violin lessons. And so we have, like, five violins in our schoolroom. And so I'm going to be trying to do Jurgen's tune on the violin. Like, whenever I'm not doing the schoolwork, I'm like, Oh, hello, Ray Lady. So I'm going to be posting some music, maybe singing to some Coldplay I love Coldplay, guys. I've listened to the Viva La Vida Prospects March, March Edition album all week. I love it. But that's kind of what I'm planning on for, like, future episodes. So, bye, guys. Beware Toothy Cows.